Hey everybody! Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Zach and I am hosting something very special for you guys. Since we don't have youth group this weekend because it's Easter, I thought it'd be cool to have a couple of my friends over to my house to make some special Easter cookies called Resurrection Cookies. So I just want to introduce them to you. Coming up first is Mr. Blake. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey everybody, I'm Mr. Blake. Oh, there's a microphone. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Blake. Yeah, no problem. All right, and next up is our very special guest, uh, Pastor Micah. Give it up for Pastor Micah. Go ahead and introduce guys. yourself. Wow, two mics. That must be really important. Yeah. I'm Pastor Micah, by the way, guys. Thanks for joining us. Let's cook. All right. So we are going to bake ourselves some delicious. Hold on. Yeah. I'm, you're not ready. I'm we, not. we have an apron on. Where's your apron? You need an apron. Oh my I have just the apron. <laughs> You gotta get ready, dude. Oh, right. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't have time to go get my own, but uh, my wife said that I could borrow hers. So, I like it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wear her apron, and uh, hopefully, she's not mad at me about that. Baker's gonna bike. Uh, Biker. Just like bike. Jesus is gonna resurrect. Mm. Hallelujah. This man. weekend, Easter. He is risen. Indeed. He is risen indeed. Yeah. yeah. Right on. All right. So you guys ready to bake? Oh yeah. So. You, you guys ready to make? You probably have to teach that guy a little. That's okay. That's all right. That's why you're here hey, though. Jesus is the great teacher. Mm -hmm. He's in me. That same power is in me, so that I can teach you how to bake. All go. right. I'm gonna take one more sip of coffee. Cheers. Dink it and sink it. Sounds like my golf game. All right, gentlemen. Blake, Micah, you ready? Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Here Let's we go. It. So, the very first thing that we're gonna need to do is preheat the oven to 300 degrees. Will you take care of that for I me, got Pastor that, Micah? I got that. Blake, do you know why it's 300 degrees? Because Jesus was in the tomb for three days. That's right. 100 degrees for each we're day. We're cooking, baby. We're cooking. We're cooking. Preheated. All right, so while the oven is preheating, um, we're gonna go get all the ingredients. Blake, do you know where they're at? Can yeah. you go grab them? Yeah, for sure. Sweet. All right, I'll call them out to you. All right, the first thing we're gonna need is pecans. I love pecans. They're my favorite. Oh. Next, we're gonna need some vinegar. Mm. We just need a, a little bit of vinegar, not much. No, I'm good. Whoa. There's a little bit. A little overkill, Come but on. you know. Come sweet. On. Little vinegar. Uh, we need an egg. Or we need three eggs. Three eggs. Yep. What? Oh. We weren't ready. All right, now that that's cleaned up, let's try that again. Eggs, please. Thank you. Much better. All right, I'm gonna need um, some salt. Yay. Um, sugar. Yes. Sweet stuff. I like sugar. I like some Honestly. coffee with my sugar. Absolutes. All right, that is all that we are going to need. Um, so the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to crush some pecans. It's pecans. Yep. All right. So uh, Blake over there is some Ziploc bags. Pecans. I'm not. I'm not going to address you because I know it's pecans. Um, they're all my job. Okay. okay. Yeah. One cup. That's about one cup. All right. So you, you measure precisely one cup. Okay. Yeah. There we go. All right, so now that we have the pecans in the Ziploc bags, I'm gonna need you guys pecans. to, yep, pecans. whatever. Sorry, pecans, absolutely. I said I was gonna let it drop, but let it go. You know, I, I, I can't. Just let it go. All right, so I'm gonna need let you guys to, to crush them, and it's gonna take probably about 40 times that you'll have to uh, crush the pecans. You'll need to whack them with something. Okay. Um, so you wanna go ahead and show us what you got, Blake? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Can do that. Well, I'll wait for you, because I don't, I don't have any tools with me. Okay, you, yeah. you came prepared. Sure. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, this, this guy doesn't six, hold on, dude, hold hey, on. I said, hey, hey, oh, hey, we're ready, okay, we're ready, but no. by the time he's done with crush. that, it'll be tomorrow, I, said, Ow. I, I got it, I got it, hey, I'll That's show you how to do it, one, two, three, whoa, whoa, five, six, that's crushing him, baby, okay, okay, <laughs> oh, Okay, Woo. all right. I so think I need to go a little more. Not the spoon. Yeah. You don't think this works very good? 
No, go ahead and find something else. Should I start back at one? Yeah, probably. You didn't even do anything. Those are all whole. Yeah, it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'm not around. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. 27, 28. What? I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Keep, keep going. Keep going. You're doing great. You're doing good. How are you? 28? Yeah, 28. Okay. Strike first strike card. No mercy, sir. Okay. 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Oh, Is that good? Are you okay? Do you need some ice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hold on. 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, so no frostbite. There you go. Okay. All right, well, now that we have our pecans crushed and uh, Blake's knuckles are iced, we're going to move on to the next step. What do we need there, Blake? We need um, a vinegar. We're going to need two teaspoons. Okay, I've got what you need right here. All right, I have the bowl, and we're going to need two teaspoons oh, Can we help you? of vinegar. Uh, but Oh! Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Um, so before, I would be... like to, for you to smell this vinegar. Smell that. Ooh, yeah. Mm, that's bad. Smell that. That's bad. Bet you won't take a sip. I'll take Ooh. a sip. No, we're not gonna do that. Nope. Um, that doesn't go with the story that we're reading today. Um, all right, yep, go ahead and do the, um, the vinegar. We need... We need a teaspoon. We need two teaspoons. Two. Oh, two teaspoons, that's two right. Two teaspoons, we're... yep. Don't spill anything. Wow. wow. Uh -huh. I'm impressed. I am impressed too. There's one. There's two. There's two. All right, so now that we have uh, finished crushing the pecans and putting the vinegar in the mixing mm -hmm. bowl, the next thing that we're gonna need is three egg whites. Pastor Mikey, you said that you got a sweet trick on that, right? I do, I do. Okay. So this water bottle uh, is an opportunity to be able to suck out uh, the yolk so you can just mm. have um, the egg white, so I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah. Uh, you gotta crack the egg, something like that. You know, if you're talented, you can break it with one oh. hand. Drop that thing in there. Uh, what you wanna do is be able to suction up the egg yolk as best as possible. And see if it'll uh, grab up here. <laughs> It looks so much easier on Instagram, I promise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just gotta get a spoon in there and you can get a spoon. Yeah. Well, now that we're back, uh, we're gonna try a spoon. Maybe this will be a little easier. So, same thing here. Crack the egg. Thank you. All right, now that Pastor Micah has pulled out all the yolks from the eggs, we're gonna go ahead and dump sure. this in there. All right, now that we have put the egg whites in with our vinegar, the next thing that we're gonna need to do is salt. So Blake, can you go ahead and put the salt in there for us? Sure thing. That reminds me of us being the salt of the earth. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever tasted salt straight by itself? Yeah, it's pretty salty. It's, it's, it is quite the ordeal. Yeah, oh, well you, that. yeah. Look at that, I'm like a pro now. Yeah, I like great to eat very evenly Thank distributed. You. All right, so the last ingredient that we're gonna need for these cookies for right now is a, a cup, two cups of sugar. Oh, Micah, can you handle that? I got the, I got the sugar. Blake, can you get me a, a measuring cup? Great. I'm gonna get a like cup, of one cup of coffee. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. The yeah, the other one is... Uh, oh, you're real picky about it. Yeah, cups. I know, I know. That's a lot of sugar. Sweet. One more cup? Yes, sir. Beautiful, mm, great job. Okay, so we have all the ingredients in there. We have um, the egg whites, the vinegar, we have the salt and sugar, um, oh. and we're gonna have to put these in a little bit later. Oh, okay, yep. okay, okay. Yep. So the next thing that we're gonna have to do is we have to mix this for 11 to 15 minutes. Okay. Wow. So. Time for a nap. Don't worry, this video is not gonna be that long. 
we're going to go ahead and do that for you. We are back at it and uh, we let that mix for uh, 15 to 30 minutes. Um, we got a little distracted playing ping pong. Uh, but hey, it was fun. Uh, I think the, the, the help is tied two to two, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll probably play one more game after this. Yeah. We'll oh, tell you who's the reigning champ um, for today. All right, so the next step for these resurrection cookies is we have to fold the crushed pecans into the meringue. Uh, Blake, would you show us how you're gonna do that? Yeah, I would show us how to fold, show us how to fold. All right, see, so here we have some pecans in the bowl, and we're just gonna fold these in very carefully to not flatten out our meringue. Go ahead and tilt it towards us a little bit more, That's possible. Yeah. Okay, so here, as you see, Pastor Micah dumped in some more pecans, um, and we have to be careful, right, to add them in steps. We don't add too many, or else we'll overwhelm the meringue. Um, so we're just gonna continue to fold. I just love like how this. you explain this like you're a professional chef. I've, I've made a few meringues in my day. Not me. This is my first. Really? See, I used to go to uh, my granny's house. She would make, we'd make meringues. My grandma just made, uh, Pancakes for me. Thank you. I watched. Oh. Unfortunate. Two's great though. Yeah. All right, everybody. So we finished folding in all of our pecans, and we're just going to be lining a cookie sheet. We'll get that for you. With dollops of our meringue. Now. Is that you want to help out here? Absolutely. No, there's nothing. All right. So now we gotta sploop it onto the cookie sheet, right? Sploop. Yeah. You need to spray this thing down. Oh, that chicken base. <laughs> All right, here we go. Was that too big? Just and then dollop it. Dollop, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just like that. Just like that. that. It's really good. It's really Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and put the cookies inside the, the oven. oven. Okay. Nice. In that four hour long preheated oven. And then we're going to close it up. Absolutely. Blake, will you go ahead and grab that tape? There you go, some and, shirt. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put three strips um, across, sealing that door shut. All right, so we put everything together and we put it in the oven. We sealed it with tape and it is gonna stay there for the next 24 hours. Now, we're gonna head to the couch as Pastor Micah uh, explains why we did each step. Well, guys, we are so glad that you joined us. And yeah, we had a little bit of fun making those cookies, but there was a reason why we did that. And we're going to tell you the story of Easter through the whole process. And we're going to begin with John chapter 19, verse 1 through 3. Zach, how about you read that for us? Yeah, it says this. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. So in our process of making these cookies, we took pecans and we began to beat them. When Jesus was arrested, uh, the Roman soldiers began to beat him as well. And he did this because he loved us so much. We're going to continue the story in, in the next step here of John uh, chapter 19, verse 28 through 30. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, 
he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Wow. You know, we took a process of putting in vinegar into our mix, and that represents the fact that Jesus was on the cross, he was thirsty. That's what they lifted up to him to have to drink. So that represents that piece of scripture. The next is we're going to look at John chapter 10, verse 10 through 11. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A prominent picture of life in the Easter story and in our culture today is the egg. And we used a couple of those in our process of making these cookies. And it helps us understand that Jesus gave his life. He gave it for us. He gave his life for us to have life. The next passage that we're going to look at is Luke chapter 23, verse 27. A large number of people followed him, including a woman who mourned and wailed for him. You know, salt was one of the ingredients that we used, and uh, this represents the salty tears that were shed for the life of Jesus and, and represents the fact that there's a lot of bitterness uh, of understanding our own sin. That was the thing that put him on the cross, and we should be mournful uh, for the sins that we have committed, understanding that God died for those. The next couple of scriptures that we're going to read are going to come from Psalms and then also uh, the book of John. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. That was Psalms 34, 8. And in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. See, Jesus gave his life, and that's the sweet part of the story. You know, we had to add sugar into the mix, and it gives it a sweet taste to that cookie, but the willingness of Jesus to give his life for us is a, the sweetest part of the story because he loved us that much. Understand that, that God loved you so much that he was willing to give his one and only son for you. Let's read another passage here found in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, and then John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Isaiah 1, 18 says, Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And in John 3, verses 1 through 3, it says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Wow. Powerful words to think about. And ultimately, you know, as you begin to mix uh, up all the ingredients together, you see how it begins to form uh, into this pure white substance. It's the same thing that that Jesus does in our life as we begin to ask him to forgive us and to save us so that we're born again, we are cleansed and made white as snow. The next passage that we're going to look at here in our story is Matthew chapter 27, verse 57 through 60. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. We just read that this man, Joseph, gave up his own tomb for Jesus. You know, we had to put the pecans into um, our mixture 
and fold it together and to be able to make the cookie. And what those pecans are to represent, those little mounds on that cookie is to represent the tomb that Jesus was placed in. We're going to finish this story here with Matthew chapter 27, verse 65 through 66. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. As we began to put in the cookies into the oven, what we did was sealed the oven just as Pilate asked the guards to do, to be that seal over there and to watch overnight. You know, it may be sad to leave the cookies in the oven overnight, um, but Jesus' followers were in that same position. Their hero, the guy that they've been following, is now sealed in this tomb overnight, and they're wondering what in the world is going to take place. How is this supposed to end this way? But that's not the end of the story. Let's read here in John chapter 16, verse 20, and then in verse 22. Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. So with you now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. Now these cookies, when they're finished, you're going to be able to open up the oven You're going to have the opportunity to be able to take a bite. And to your surprise, the middle is going to be hollow because there's nothing there. The same way in the story of the resurrection as Jesus resurrects on what we call that Easter morning, there's nothing left in the tomb. The scripture is very clear in in Matthew chapter 28, 1 through 9, that story of the beautiful realization of the people that came to the tomb that morning to prepare Jesus' body, now is empty. Let's read that here. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and collapsed at his feet and worshipped him. Guys, what a beautiful picture. What a thing that we're going to celebrate tomorrow. And we encourage you to bring your friends, your family to our service and to celebrate what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago, that he conquered death, hell, and the grave, and he did it for you. Let's close on a word of prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the risen Savior, that we have the opportunity to be able to celebrate that Mm -hmm. and that we can live knowing that you're alive. Lord, thank you for your love, your willingness to go on the cross and to die for us. Lord, you're so good to us. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. 
Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to watch this video tonight. Hey, if you're interested to find out how these cookies taste and how they turned out, come find Pastor Mike and myself or Blake this Sunday. The first 20 students that come to find us will get one of these cookies. I think that they turned out incredible. They're yummy, they're delicious, and there's a special surprise inside of them. So come find, be one of the first 20 to come find us. It doesn't matter if you're in middle school or in high school, come find us and we will gladly give you one of these cookies. They're amazing. Hey, I hope you all have a fantastic Easter. Remember, it is because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross that we can come boldly into the presence of God and walk with him day to day because of Jesus, our advocate, not because of anything that we have done, not because we're worthy, but because he's worthy and because he made that sacrifice on the cross and we're so thankful. Hey, have a happy Easter. Thank you so much.